So at the very beginning, Mr. Carfine, welcome, and you are recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman Garrett, Ranking Member Maloney. I'm pleased to be here today. My name is Tony Carfang, and I'm a Managing Director with Treasury Strategies. We're a division of Novantis. We're a consulting firm specializing in treasury payments and liquidity, and we work with hundreds of corporations, uh, municipalities, healthcare organizations, and financial institutions around the country. The issues we're talking about today are very important to our clients, and you know, there are three, what, what I see the big three regulations that have come out of the financial crisis are Basel III, Dodd-Frank, and money market fund reform. These are bold experiments. And as we all learned in high school chemistry, when you do an experiment, you pour the chemicals in slowly and carefully. What's happened in this case is all the experiments went into the test tube at the same time, and that test tube is American's businesses and America's consumers. And we're now seeing the reaction, and, the, and in some cases, the uncontrolled reaction of that. For example, in the five years since the post-crisis regulation, regulations have been going into effect, there are 1,500 fewer banks in the United States. That's more than a 20% decrease. You know, uh, America used to create about 150 to 170 new banks per year. That's an 80-year average. Since 2010, only two new banks have been formed in the United States. I think that, that gives you a sense of how crushing the regulations have been. But what I'd like to do today is focus on money market mutual funds and point out first that in 2010, the SEC introduced a set of reforms to improve uh, transparency and liquidity, and th those regulations were very successful in terms of uh, providing safety and soundness to not only money market funds, and, but the entire financial system without impairing the utility of those funds to investors. Unfortunately, in 2014, the SEC again came out with, a, with, with an extended set of regulations that in, in effect prohibited what they called non-natural persons from investing in stable net asset value, uh, prime and municipal money market funds. And the result of that has been to, uh, for, for investors to exit those funds. And what we've seen is in prime funds, and by the way, prime funds are private sector funds, they invest in the commercial paper or other debt of corporations and financial institutions, providing the day-to-day -day working capital for those organizations. Assets have fallen almost 75% from 1.4 trillion down to about 380 billion. That's hardly a scaling back. They've been crushed. They've been decimated. And the, and the borrowers who rely on those funds for financing, where they are able to find credit elsewhere, have a much higher cost to that credit. On the municipal funds, here, the, 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 the impact is, is particularly profound. We, we've seen a, a, a decrease of 50% 50, 50 from about $260 billion down to $130 billion in assets. These are the funds that finance municipalities, schools, hospitals, uh, and universities. Uh, to give you some examples, here, the, uh, the state of New York has seen just this year a decrease in funding from $39 billion down to $19 billion. Uh, California healthcare finance from $2 billion down to $1.3. But the total de de decline has been $1.2 trillion. And let me point out, this money has moved from the private sector to the public sector. And uh, to put that in perspective, that's more, the $1.2 trillion is more than the entire TARP program uh, of, of, of several years ago. It's more than the stimulus program, and it's several times more than the amount of cash we expect to get back from overseas uh, if we can get corporations to repatriate. The, these are huge numbers. You know, in, in addition to states losing financing, you know, let, let me just point out, uh, you know, uh, the, the Metropolitan uh, Transit Authority in New York City has seen its financing fall from 2.3 billion down to 800 million. They've lost a billion and a half that municipal money funds used to finance. Uh, Harris County, Texas educational facilities have lost, uh, they've gone from a billion one down to 580 million. You know, th these are very real consequences. HR 4216 is, is designed to provide a simple fix to allow non-natural persons to again invest in stable value money market funds. Uh, 
this will restore funding. You know, it's the stable value that's the threshold issue that makes this uh, money funds a cash management tool for corporate treasurers. And without that stable value, uh, you know, the, 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 as a source of financing, we, we lose a couple trillion dollars. This, this is all about preserving money market funds as an effective financing tool. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. So I'd like to ask both of you, do you think that if we did away with just the floating NAV requirement, that that would cause investors to put all their money back into the money market funds, or are the gates and fees the bigger problem here? Thank you. You, you, you make an excellent point. Gates and fees, as well as the floating NAVs, are all problems. I've testified that in, in, to that in the past. The floating NAV is the threshold issue, however, because NAVs started to float beginning October 14th. Corporate treasurers would have needed to change their investment policies, get board approval, uh, implement systems, change their, their, their tax reporting. That was the threshold issue that caused the problem. Gates and fees are clearly a longer run problem. In, in a black swan event, the, you know, the possibility of a gate clearly is a problem. We, we think that if we can change that threshold issue on the, on the FNAV for, for non-natural persons, that can begin the process of at least bank sweep accounts going back into money market funds as well as institutional investors. Uh, longer term, you know, the commission itself, I believe, needs to address the uh, fees and gates issue of that. But we need to get, you know, 40, 4216 sends a signal to the commission that uh, this committee wants to keep money market funds in business, will reinstitute the floating NAV, and <coughs> the commission itself can deal with the regulatory aspects of fees and gates. Ambassador, so I'd like to ask the panel if you, if you all would respond and comment on whether you think that the Securities and Exchange Commission did a sufficient job at understanding the impact of this rule and the impact it might have on the market, or if there are other factors outside of the security exchange rule that may be contributing to rising short-term borrowing costs. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, uh, Mr. Carling. I don't think anyone, including the Securities and Exchange Commission, imagined that $1.2 trillion was going to leave. Uh, I, I, th I think that exceeds everyone's wildest, uh, worst case scenario. Uh, and in that regard, you know, uh, I, I think it's important to step back and understand what factors took place. In my testimony, when I talk about rates rising, uh, I'm, I'm looking at spreads. So um, the, the Fed rate hike, for example, last December uh, impacted the markets. But what, if you look at the spread of LIBOR, which is the basic business borrowing cost over treasuries, that spread has widened. Market rate changes impact both of those identically. Mm -hmm. So we are actually seeing evidence of about a 25 or 30 basis point increase in borrowing costs over and above what the Fed rate changes have done. Sir. Mm -hmm. right. I agree. Mr. Carving, if you want to add anything to that. Well, and the, the increased cost is 25 or 30 basis points is against $10 trillion of debt keyed off of the LIBOR rate. So we're talking about an increase of $30 billion of cost. And, you know, companies like FMC, where, where Tom was treasurer, you know, aren't even going to consider that uh, and obviously exit. Uh, Mr. Carving, I wanted to follow up with, with you and, and ask this question. Do, do you believe, you've talked about this imbalance, do you think it's going to get worse in the coming months or better? Well, it, it, it looks like the decline out of prime funds has stabilized. But as one of my colleagues told me, you know, falling off a cliff and hitting a rock and, and calling your fall stabilized uh, is, is not necessarily what, what you want to achieve. I mean, it's not there. laughing matter, but I mean... No, no it's, not, it's not happy. Uh, I, I don't think it can turn around until uh, we, we, we get relief on the fluctuating net asset value short term and then fees and gates on... In, in, Which, Ken, in, I think, in I think the follow-up is fairly common sense, but still would ask you to articulate. You, it, could you expand on I mean, what, what is the answer here? What, what do we need to do in response to this trillion-dollar drop? 
Well, you know, I, th I, I, th I think first of all, you know, HR 4216 will restore the floating nav for non-natural persons. And th that sends a message to, to the commission uh, that, that, that Congress really wants to protect and defend the money market fund as a primary investment vehicle, uh, as, as it has been for 40 years and several tr tr trillions, of do trillions of dollars. Getting the fluctuating nav fixed for non-natural persons will uh, uh, remove the administrative bar 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 uh, barriers to corporate treasurers investing in, in, in these funds will also allow banks who sweep into money market funds and, and by definition then must sweep into a constant net asset value fund to pull some of their assets back in as well as wealth management groups and, and brokers who sweep on behalf of both retail and, 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 and corporate clients. So that begins to open the door for some of the money to come back and then that would allow the commission then to, to uh, go back and alter the, the uh, fees and gates part of this. On that. Uh, Mr. Carfang, as you know, I asked Treasury Secretary Jack Lew about this issue at a full committee hearing in September. His response surprised me at that point. Nearly a trillion had moved in, in anticipation of the rules implementation. Yet Secretary Lew said that we were, quote, not seeing dislocations in the marketplace on a broad basis, close quote. He went on to add that, quote, we're not seeing problems arising in the market where funding needs can't be met, close quote. Um, I'm wondering if you could respond to Secretary Liu's comments. Well, I, I would be concerned if he, if, if, if he did see a dislocation. This change had been telegraphed for two years, and the Treasury itself announced it was watching and stood ready for, uh, for greater debt issuance if the markets needed the Fed to, uh, the, 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 the uh, Treasury to step in. Uh, these dislocations are real. Uh, companies are paying higher interest rates. Municipalities are losing funding from tax-exempt funds and having to turn to other uh, more When more, he, when he says funding sources. needs can't be met, um, I mean, is that necessarily the, 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 the question? I mean, that's one of the questions, but there's also a cost associated with that. Well, well sure. The, there, are, there are funds available in the market, but, 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 but at a cost. I, I can go to my father-in-law to borrow money, but I certainly wouldn't want to do that. At, at, at his price, uh, you, you know, I'd, I'd rather borrow from you know, the, you know, corporate treasurers need to borrow from from the most deep and efficient markets, like like the commercial paper market uh, and, and 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 the bank markets. And, and looking at the municipal context, where I think you testified that uh, assets and tax exempt funds and prime funds have fallen. Well, well, well let's look at tax exempt, uh, um, fallen roughly by half. Right. Uh, uh, this is funding used by municipalities, schools, hospitals. Um, it stands to reason that this rule is to blame for driving some of the money out of these assets, yes? That's correct. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, the, the fluctuating NAV and the non-natural person restriction almost makes it impossible for a bank trust department to, to now invest in a tax-exempt fund because the bank trust department has no way of seeing down through into the natural person, non-natural person question. But a natural person still gets to invest in a fixed. Uh, a, a natural person would still be able to invest in a fixed. Well, except a, a, a natural person and a non-natural person is, is, is kind of a fiction. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, it, it gets down to the question of who's making the investment decision uh, deep down in, in, inside of an omnibus account. and. That the, the banks simply have no way of knowing that. Question, if I, is one of the concerns the SEC has and others have in this, uh, that have been dealing with this issue is a, a run on the bank, uh, accelerated redemptions. And do you have any evidence, or do the folks that you work with have any evidence that this new rule dealing with mark to market or floating nav or whatever you want to call it uh, uh, would have an impact uh, in slowing down or stopping accelerated redemptions at a tough time? I'm actually not best person in my shop to um, answer that question, but we can get back to you on that one. Is there anybody else, on, thank you, anybody else in the panel like to take a shot at that? Well, it's my Carfing, sense. You look like you're ready to say something. Well, sh sure. Um, it, 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 will, it will not stop a run. And, and, and in fact, if you go back and look at what happened during the financial crisis, while the reserve fund broke a buck and investors fled, i.e. a run, uh, that, that was on the Monday morning that Lehman went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. 
the run didn't spread in, in, until it hit the entire capital market on the Wednesday, which was after the Federal Reserve announced a bailout of AIG. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the reserve fund that spread to other prime funds. It was when the entire market collapsed. So, so what I'm hearing you say, sir, is that market conditions, whether it be economic or capital market conditions, really determine investor behavior. Exactly. Okay. Uh, why do we need to tell investors it's worth par when it isn't, instead of allow, having a private sector uh, insurance so that it really is worth par? Um, I'll go to, uh, I don't know which of you would like to respond. Uh, well, Mr. Uh, Carfun. Sure. Daily liquidity is the fundamental uh, mm-hmm. cash management need of corporations, and money market mutual funds have provided that uh, since, since their institution over, over 40 years ago. And well, I, I've got and, daily liquidity on my S and P 500 fund too, but uh, um, it may not be minute equi- uh, uh, liquidity, but it's uh, daily liquidity. But no, nobody's going to tell me that it's worth par. Right. Thank but, you. But, but what, what you have are ultra short investments in the funds that uh, that, that, that can be am- amortized to, to to maturity and actually provide that daily liquidity at par. Uh, and, you know, this is the same way that Treasury and government funds operate. So, you know, this whole argument about separating out the, private, the funds that deal with the private sector and municipalities from government funds, well, government funds uh, operate under the same accounting rules as, as, as well. So. Uh, Mr. Carfang, I uh, want to address my uh, at least initial questions to you, if I may. On page 7 of your testimony, uh, you, you stated, tax-exempt funds, a key source of funding for municipalities, universities, and hospitals, have experienced a 51% or $132 billion decline from $260 billion to $128 billion dollars. How much of this decline is directly attributable to the SEC's new rules? Do you think there could be other factors in that? Uh, and then continuing on my question, some of my constituents have raised concerns that the imposition of a floating NAV is increasing the cost for tax-exempt financing. However, I have also heard that the liquidity fees and redemption gates are a bigger issue. Uh, what has your research shown on that? And then last, uh, during a November hearing before the Financial Services Committee, SEC uh, Chair Mary Jo White noted that uh, the recent movements in the money market fund occurred consistent uh, with their economic analysis. Chair White also testified that she expects that the institutional prime funds will stabilize and see a return of funds sometime after the October effective date. Do you agree with this assessment? There's a lot of questions there. I apologize. That that, that was a lot of questions. Well, the first one is... uh, what, what percent of the uh, de- decline in tax exempt funds was due to the SEC regulations? All of it. That there's no question about it. Banks had to, uh, for technical reasons, pull out of it uh, b- because they simply couldn't sweep and they couldn't identify non- non-natural persons. Uh, see, the second part of your question... Well, it was uh, about... Um, uh some constituents raise concern about imposition of a floating NAV is increasing costs for tax exempt financing. Uh, but uh, also, I've heard that liquidity fees and redemption gates are a bigger issue. Uh, what is, is your research shown on that? Well, what we've testified, and we've spoken to the commission as well, that both the floating NAV and and the fees and gates are key issues, uh, and and that the, 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 the should not have been imposed uh, the, the the way they have been. Uh, the, the floating nav is the threshold issue, though, because there are a number of mechanical and uh, uh, administrative reasons why a number of organizations have to move their money out. So, you know, with, with uh, 4216, that, that actually informs the SEC that it's the intention of Congress to protect and defend and restore money market funds. That can be an immediate fix. And then the fees and gates, which are an issue, can be dealt with longer term. Okay. Let me ask you quickly here. Uh, do you believe the SEC and other members of, the, of FSOC should uh, conduct an analysis and see what systematic, uh, systematic, uh, I'm sorry, systemic risk uh, could be posed by the decrease of liquidity in our bond market? To your knowledge, has the FSOC or any uh, member agency conducted any analysis of the systemic risk that could result from a lack of liquidity in the corporate bond market due to misguided regulatory initiatives like the Volcker Rule or Basel III? Well, I... I, I think the rules, well, they, they, they dry up liquidity in the market, they depress trading, they reduce dealer inventories, so, so, so as a result, there's less price discovery and there's less economic efficiency all the, all the way around. Yeah. And, you, you know, a, a theme I'm hearing is 
that you know the, the, the investors in these in these prime funds don't understand the valuation uh, or, uh, or 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 what's going on in, in the daily liquidity. Frankly, that's an insult to corporate treasurers all over America. The, the, these are sophisticated folks who know exactly what's in these funds and, and, and understand the risk, and, uh, and 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 make their judgments based on that.